Hey guys, so uh, today I'm going to be explaining this, um, this is for the cosmic rays here. I'm going to be explaining how I am doing the uh, data transport between Arduinos. So let me explain the setup here, okay, this is, this is by no means even close to final, this is just um, sort of testing out this uh, software here to see if it's, um, if it works to uh, sort of get the data transport uh, right, so this is by no means a final software, and also switch to screen capture when I do to explain it, but first I gotta explain this hardware here. So we have, you remember in the original design, I have one Arduino that's uh, counting the cosmic rays per minute, um, it's counting the time, and then um, it's also sending data to the SD card, so I don't, what I don't have it doing is doing all of that, so it's not counting the cosmic rays per minute, it's not sending data to the SD card, and it's not counting time. Okay, all I have right now is just the part that transmits data. So this Arduino is going to be the Arduino that's receiving the data. So this would be the Arduino that's counting the cosmic rays and um, putting it to the SD card. So instead of the SD card, what I have this one doing is, is uh, connected over USB usually and sending it to a serial monitor on the computer so that I can verify that the right data is um, getting transmitted. And then this Arduino is the one that's doing the weather sensors. So as you can see here, I have, I have the two sensors. Uh, yeah, the zoom's not going to work again. Um, but right here, this black one, this is the temperature sensor, and this uh, clear one, that's the light to frequency converter. And then also, I just have these two wires that I can just, these two yellow ones that I can just move high or low to simulate the water sensors. So the, what the water sensors, there's going to be two of them. One of them is going to sense like, you know, that much water, and the other one's going to sense that much water for a high and a low water sensor. So, um, and, and when, and they're active high, so when the water sensor is sensing water, it goes high, so I can just move these higher or low to emulate the water sensors, so I don't actually have to have a cup of water here next to my computer or whatever. So this is the Arduino that's doing that, and in, in the, um, and it's, uh, I should point out that in the, um, original design as I originally had it, and, and I still have it right now, this is not going to be an Arduino Mega, I'm just using that for testing because I don't have a second, uh, because, um, it, it has, this has um, multiple serial ports on it, so I can have this serial communication going to this Arduino, and then the serial communication going to the computer on a separate serial port. But in the, um, in the uh, uh, real design, it's going to be communicating to the SD card via I squared C, I believe, um, or SPI. It's, it's one of the things from SparkFun, so it, it, I, I probably can get it to do SPI or I squared C, so I don't have to, so I can use a separate I squared C bus on a, a regular Arduino um, AT Mega 328 chip, so I don't have to use my Mega. So um, what's going on systems-wise? I have the temperature sensors and the water sensors hooked up to some digital ports here. Um, they share the same power over the USB bus, and the um, TX, this is the uh, one TX1 instead of the, just the regular transmit serial port, it's, the, uh, it's actually a second serial port. TX from this one is connected to RX from this one, and RX from this one is connected to TX from this one. Um, and that's really it. So what, what the main architecture of this program is, just sort of block diagram style, is um, the way it works right now is this one will send out one of three um, characters, basically an H, an I, or a J. Um, and each one of those corresponds to a different sensor. So H is temperature, I is um, light, and J is water. So when this one sends out one of those characters, we'll just say H for now, sends out an H over the serial bus, this one receives it, and then um, executes the, the program, um, which reads the um, temperature sensor, and then sends that data back to this Arduino. So basically what's happened is this Arduino has requested the temperature data, this Arduino has gotten the temperature data and sent it back, and then this Arduino sends that temperature data over USB to the computer. And um, that's it. So uh, I, I, what I've done already is the water one is pretty easy, but right now I have just just it doing H. So it's just going to send out an H. Um, this one is going to receive the H, send back the temperature. This one's going to send it to the computer, and it's going to do that loop over and over and over again. Okay. So let me switch to computer screen capture software to show you um, both codes for both Arduinos and explain how it works. Okay, so what happens after this one transmits an H is it then goes through the wires and is stored in the serial buffer of this one. 
Okay, so that means there's now one character in the serial buffer. So this serial available thing is saying how many characters are serial available returns the amount of characters in this in the buffer. So if it's greater than zero in this case, since we just printed an H, it's going to be one. So it is greater than zero. So it's going to say um, serial read basically gives you the first byte in the serial buffer. So in this case, it's going to be an H. So incoming byte is now equal to H. And if incoming byte equals to 0x48, if you look up the hex codes, 0x48 is an H, okay? So if incoming byte is equal to H, which in this case it is because that's what we printed, it's going to serial print back to the Arduino Mega the um, degrees from the um, temperature sensor. And that's it, okay? Then I have the other ones. If it prints an I, then it's going to print the... Um, um, cool, I believe, is just some random variable that I assign to the frequency from the frequency to light converter. And if it's a J, it's going to print the water level. And then it's it's just going to wait uh, after it prints to to um, go back to its regular to the regular program, which is just reading the sensors. Okay, but this is the one we're concerned about because this is the one that this program is dealing with. So um, it's going to then print out the degrees, and if um, you look up here, it's giving you a float, so basically the, um, the, the way we're going to, the style of data we're going to receive is going to be um, a number, a number, point, number, number, so like 20.37, okay, and that's going to correspond to 20.37 degrees Celsius or whatever. It could be 0, 0 0.1599.32, you know, that, that could be outside the range of the sensor, but you get the idea. It's going to be XX point XX. That's going to be the format we're receiving it in. Okay, so for this one, it's going to wait after it prints the H, because it has to wait. Uh, that, that probably, that's probably too long to wait, but I, I'm not really super concerned with time here. But basically, after it prints the H, it's got to wait for this one to then read, uh, to do everything I just told you. Read the incoming byte, and then figure out which one it is, read the um, sensor, and then print it back. So then, it's in the serial buffer of this one. Okay, so... Now it's in the uh, serial buffer of this one, this um, XX point XX, and that is five, okay, five different characters. So the serial of that available is going to return the number five, because <coughs> there's five different things in it, the um, number, number, point, number, number. So if it's greater than four, which in this case it's always going to be greater than four, because it's always going to return that same data format. The, um, the incoming bytes, these are characters. <coughs> 48 is just random that I assigned it, has nothing to do with it. But there's five of them, because if you remember, there's five things, XS point XX. Okay? Um, and so serial, and the important thing here is that I have these five different characters. The important thing is that they're characters, because if you don't store them as characters, if you store them as integers, you're going to receive like 72 and stuff, which are the decimal formats. So it's confusing, because you've got the three different things. You've got the character H, you have the hexadecimal 0x48, and you have the regular decimal 72 or whatever I believe it is. Maybe 72, isn't it? But it, So you have these three different things. And you've got to remember that they're all really the same thing, and you're just storing it in the wrong format. So in this case, I just want to get the numbers as I as they're over here. So this character incoming byte, which is going to store in the right format character, which we want, is going to be the serial read. So this is going to pull the first number uh, out of the serial buffer. Okay. Then this second incoming byte is going to pull the first number off the serial um, as well. But what happens is when you pull it off the serial, um, the serial data that's stored in the serial register, it's going to delete it. So this, the data that this is reading is then deleted, and it's, this is going to read the next one, which is going to, then going to be first in line, and this is going to read the next one, which is going to be first in line, this is going to read the next one, which is first in line, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this, this gets us all the bytes. So this is going to be the first number, the second number, decimal point, third number, fourth number. Then I set this character string, string two, which is six, okay? Um, to equal all of these. But the thing is, you're saying, why is there six? There's only five of them. Well, because strings always need to have a null byte at the end of it. So this six uh, leaves the program. The program's automatically going to do this for you, but at the end of this one, it's going to put in a null byte to tell you that the string is essentially finished. And then it's going to print this uh, character string. And um, that's really it. That's, that's really the entire... Okay, hey guys, so uh, here you can see this program actually in action. This is the, um, this is the serial read, so this is, this is after, this is, this is this, basically, you're seeing the second string, okay? 
So um, that's that's really this string. So the the important thing is you have to remember to do this because this I set this character string equal to these things up here, but this string is going to stay equaling 48, 48, 48, 48. Okay, so that's a, that's a problem. So you have to make sure to make the string re equal the same thing here after it's it's um, re updated the values. So um, yeah. Here you can see I have my camera pointed at the Arduino, and uh, you can see every time that this this um, updates with a new value on the temperature sensor. So you see now I'm going to hold my finger on the temperature sensor, and it's going to start to warm up a little bit. It's a little slow because I have all these delays which are a little too long, probably uh, longer than they need to be. Um, but that's fine. I don't I don't really care. I'm not really super concerned with time here. Anyway, so that's this way. Uh, that's the way this um, this is working. Basically, this part is the uh, heart of the program, and the hardest part here was um, remembering. Oops. Oh, that's bad. Okay. Um, the hardest part was remembering. Um, remembering to keep all of these as characters because you want to receive them as characters, and you may think I want to receive them as numbers. But really, if you serial print a 1 over here, just in quotes, you're actually going to get the character 1 instead of the decimal 1. Um, but that's fine, because when you import it into the computer, send it to the SD card and import it to the computer, you want it to read the characters. Um, so you got to remember to keep these incoming bytes as characters. And the important part here is to remember that if you serial read uh, multiple times, like I'm doing here, it actually deletes it. So this byte is then stored in incoming byte, but is then deleted off the serial register. And in fact, then you uh, then this byte, um, then incoming two byte becomes first up. So if you can see what happens over here, you have this two, right? It's it's probably a bad example if they're the same number. Um, you can see I'm holding it now, um, but you have this first two. This first two that is um, essentially taken from from the serial register. It's then deleted, and then the uh, the next two comes up. Um, to go, and then that's stored in the next uh, variable, and then this the next, and then the decimal point comes up because it's deleted that um, second two, and it it gets stored in the serial register, and then the next one comes up and it's stored in the serial register and deleted, and then the next one comes up and stored in the serial register and deleted. So that's um, really the way this um, this works. Um, so how is it gonna uh, when it's final? Um, what's um, what's going to happen is you're going to have this um, the, the program on the right this this one with the receiver the one that's now worked by the mega but that's um, actually going to be worked by the Dewey Milanove it's going to count time so I'm going to have it um, getting fed a pulse every second through a um, interrupt and it's going to count and when those pulse reaches 60 uh, which is one minute it's going to then um, serial print an H um, st store this character string with the temperature, serial print I, store a second char a character string with the um, frequency of the light, and then it's going to serial print a J and store a second, a third character string with the um, value of the water sensor, and then it's going to print all three of those character strings uh, with commas in between. Um, with comma separated values, uh, CSV as a CSV file onto the SD card, uh, with the time as well, and it's going to bring a carriage return at the end of every sort of data sample that we're getting every minute or every sentence, if you will, and then it's going to do it again the next minute. Um, so that's it. Thanks for uh, watching. I hope you learned something about this uh, Cosmic Ray project and how to communicate between Arduinos. It's also important that here on the Douay Milanove, you're not going to see these transmit and uh, receive lights come uh, lighting up because it's that only lights up when it goes when the data goes through the FTDI chip. So thanks for watching.